Now let's look at the cash flow statement. So again, we are only using the nine accounting entries that we practiced together or we learned together. So these are again very simple financial statements. In reality, the financial statements are a little more complex with a lot more number of transactions. First point, statement of cash flow is similar to the income statement. It is for a period and not a given point in time like the balance sheet. Okay, so the cash flow statement is divided into three sections. The first section is cash provided by operations or operating activity. Second section is cash provided by investments or investment activities. And then finally, the third section is cash provided by financing activities. Okay. So what are operations or operating activity? It is the regular business that the company performs. So for example, in this case, Bold Bikes Company is in the business of buying and selling bikes. So it is really related to the operations of buying and selling bikes. Investing activities, when the company invests in other assets, so for example, purchasing of assets, property, plant and equipment, or any income received on investments would be classified as investing activities. Financing activities reflect how the company sources funds, sources money. So of course, in our example, the only source so far is the issue of shares, the initial equity investment that the owner has done. So any financing activities are reflected here. And again, we will look at each of these financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow in detail. This example is just to show you the flow of the entries that we just learned, okay? So we are looking at cash flow from direct method. There are two methods to prepare cash flow. One is the direct method. The other one is the indirect method. So the direct method is where we actually look at all individual transactions or we summarize them to understand what was the cash flow, what was the cash inflow or cash outflow from each activity. This is actually the method that is recommended by standards, but it's not an easy method. It's not easy to have all the information readily available. So most organizations prefer the indirect method. And the difference between direct and indirect method is that in the indirect method, we start with net income from the income statement and adjust any non-cash items that we are aware of out of that net income to arrive at the cash provided by operations, okay? So it's more like an indirect method of arriving at the cash flow from operations compared to the direct method where actual direct cash flows are reflected in the cash flow statement, okay? So if you look at cash used by operations, so we know customers, cash collected from customers is an operating activity, it's the normal business operations. So we know that we had sales of 4,000 and all of that money was received in cash. So we have cash collected 4,000, cash paid to suppliers. We know that when the company purchased 10 bicycles, it ultimately paid them $5,000 in the month of January. So that's a negative amount or a cash outflow. Similarly, the company also paid rent of $1,200. And that's pretty much it for the cash flow from operations. These are the three operating activities which impacted cash flow. And there's the net total of negative 2,200. Now, if you look at the investing activities, the company purchased furniture costing $20,000. That's negative cash flow. However, the company also received dividend income of $500 in the investing activities. So the net cash flow from investing activities is $19,500. Now we look at financing activities and that's only the issue of shares or really it's only the investment of the owner to deposit cash for equity and that's 30,000 positive. Now this gives us the total from financing activities and if we add all of these activities up which is cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing activities and cash from financing activities, we arrive at a net balance of 8,300. So in the cash flow we also reconcile the total movement which was 8,300 for the period to the final closing balance. Now in this case we are really looking at the start of a business where Initially, there was nothing. So cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the period was zero. And the movement during the period of January in cash is 8,300 positive, net positive movement. At the end of the month, the cash balance is 8,300. So these three cash flow activities shown in the three sections show the period activity. Okay, and that's the sum of the total period. However, we add the opening balance at the start of the period to give us the final closing balance. And this amount, cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period would match your cash balance, cash and cash equivalents in the balance sheet at the end of that period. So in this case, you can see it matches. 
in let's let's say in the month of January the company had further cash flows so then all of those further cash flows will also be added and then your total cash and cash equivalents balance at the end of the period will always match what you see in the balance sheet a quick look at the indirect method of cash flow so in the indirect method instead of directly going to the cash collected from customers or cash paid to vendors or suppliers we start with the net income which was $800 if you recall from our income statement this is the $800 then we will adjust for any non-cash items or any items that should actually be reflected in the investing activities or financing activities. Okay, so we don't have any non-cash items, but a good example of a non-cash item is depreciation expense. In our example, we did not have that entry so far, so we are not excluding any depreciation expense here. But we do have dividend income and dividend income should really be reflected in the investing activities. So we exclude it from here. So you see a negative $500 here, but you see positive 500 here because we are actually showing the cash flow from dividend out of operations, but in the investing activities. Then we have indirect method of calculating the cash flow from accounts receivable, inventory and accounts payable. Uh, we call it the changes in working capital. So you really need the balance sheet to calculate these. And you can see in case of accounts receivable, there is no change, right? There's no accounts receivable so far in this balance sheet. And you see I have created a comparative balance sheet of the previous period. That should actually be December 22. Yeah, so end of December 2022, there was nothing. So in accounts receivable, there is no change. There's no activity, so we'll leave it as zero. Inventory, we had zero inventory at the end of December, but during the month or say at the end of January, we have now inventory of 2,500. So when we do indirect cash flow, any increase in inventory and account receivable is a negative cash flow, as you can see with the brackets here, and any increase in accounts payable is a positive cash flow. So in this case, inventory has increased. You can see from zero to 2,500, we see a negative cash flow of 2,500. And we don't have Although we did have accounts payable during the month, but by the end of the month, there is no accounts payable. You can see it's still zero. So for cash flow perspective, it's it's neutral. There's no change in accounts payable. Again, this is indirect. It's a little complicated to understand, but impact is exactly the same. So if you see cash provided or used by operations is showing $2,200 negative, which is exactly the same as what we calculated for cash provided from operations. So as I mentioned, we will discuss the cash flow and other financial statements in more detail later. But for now, it's important to note that the cash from operations in total is the same whether you use the direct or indirect method. Okay, Cash from investing activities and financing activities is usually very similar or the same as what you see in the direct method. There's no real change there. So again, at the end, you have the same balance. Cash flow for the full period is $8,300 positive, mainly driven by the owner's investment. All the other activities such as investing activities had a negative outflow and also operations had a negative outflow. That is also why it's important to look at cash flow because if you just look at the income statement and you see the company has made a profit of $800 in the month of January, but if you look at the cash flow, you see the company actually has a negative cash flow of $2,200 from operations, right? So the operating activities actually resulted in an outflow of cash. Similarly, investing activities resulted in an outflow of cash. The only reason why you're seeing positive cash flow is the owner invested the money. There was a deposit of $30,000 at the start of the year. So if you look at it from the owner's perspective, he invested $30,000 and at the end of the month, he is actually looking at $8,300. So there appears to be a loss of $21,700. But it's not a loss, it's an investment in business and now he has a few assets in the balance sheet, right? He has furniture of 20,000, okay? He also have inventory of 2,500 that he can sell and he's of course still has $8,300 in cash. Hope this clarifies the flow of accounting entries. So again, these are the four major activities these days with computerized systems. Of course, there are more steps involved. There has to be accounting reviews of all the entries. Sometimes you have to adjust the trial balance. Sometimes you have missing entries. But if you are using a computerized accounting system, a lot of those issues are already taken care of. All you need to do is start entering the entries uh, in the system, in the accounting system. It will automatically be summarized into general ledger and trial balance. Some systems will also provide you the financial statements depending on the setup of the system. And even if the financial statements are not provided by the system, 
you know how to prepare the financial statements utilizing the trial balance.